First of all, let's make sure that I'm not wasting your time. So let me show you what you can learn here. You will learn how to make your game look much better, how to set up fog, just this one, and how to set up different effects and different post-process volumes along itself. So you can go slowly from one to another. Hello there, welcome in this tutorial. My name is Fancy and you have already seen what we are going to do, so let's just get to it. Just a quick one. If you wanna work with the same project as I do, there is a link in the description, there is a playlist where I have created this project, so you can follow it or just click on one of those videos and download that project. So I guess let's get to it. First thing I will show you is fog. Fog doesn't necessarily make uh, your game look better, but it will actually hide all your mistakes, which we all do. So that's why you always need to put the fog. Let's try fog and atmospheric fog is already there. So we will add exponential height fog. And even though if I bring it just here, you can see it already has some effect. So let's look into setting right here in details. You can see that we have selected exponential height fog and see what we can do with it. Firstly, we can actually add density. Uh, higher the density will be, the less light will be able to come through it. So let's set it as high as possible. And a little trick I will show you is to actually, oh, I lost my fog. Let's find it quickly here, Atmos exponential height fog. Little trick, you don't need to follow this uh, restrictions or whatever it is, simply rewrite it. Let's write it to 125. So now everything is in fog. If you are making Silent Hill or horror game or anything like that, this is just for you. I will actually adjust start distance because I want the fog to be a little bit further ahead. Let's set it to 750. And always test everything in game. So I will click on play. And as you can see that as I'm walking towards it, the fog is moving and everything I'm close to it is again without any fog. Even though it's kind of weirdly bluish, that's because the light we are casting to that game is reflecting from that fog. If you want to get rid of this wool bluish, ah, of this bluish color, you can simply change color of that fog. Let's say that I want to have it really red. Like it's dark. I believe that if you set it to white, it won't have any effects, at least almost any. Because it doesn't reflect any kind of light. Yeah, it seems like it. But that's not what we are going to do. We are going to make it reddish. Just a little tiny bit. Like that. <laughs> if you are making hell, this is just for you. Okay. Let's try to find this car and let's look at another settings we have here. We have already talked about start distance and density. So let's look at the uh, fog height fall off because it's something you may possibly use. I will go a little bit higher by pressing E. If you are controlling your camera, you can press Q and E to control how high you are. Oh, if you are high, of course. <laughs> and then. Uh, fog, hell, uh, fog height fall off it shows how high that fog actually is. If you want to have a really close fog, for example only in these houses, you can set it very high. So for example to 1.5 and it's about the roof of these houses and if you look more, uh, more further ahead or further up, you can see that it's no, almost none here. But that's not really what I am going for, so I will set it to, let's go with 0 0.5. And I can't use comma, I need to really use point do, or dot if you want. I set 0 0.5. If you want to set a very high density, so only a little bit of light will go through, but still want to see what is around you, you can play with fog marks opacity. If you set it to zero, you won't be able to see any fog. But if you can, for example, set density to one, almost no light can come through, as you can see. But you can lower fog opacity. You can achieve some very interesting results with it. Try to experiment with these two settings to find just what you are looking for. Uh, there is also volumetric fog, which you can use, but it's much more uh, difficult for system and you need much more high-end computer to make it work because it will in a real time, I believe, actually 
calculating how much fog how much light is going uh, coming through that fog and that's not really something I would recommend you to play with unless you really know what you are doing. The plus point is that you can actually set up emissive from this fog, uh, which I'm not sure if you can do with this uh, exponential basic fog, but you can set a lot of different settings, so I wouldn't recommend you to play with it unless you know what you are doing. Do -do -do. And that's about it from fog for fog. And now when we have set up our fog, let's get to some really interesting stuff, and that's post-processor volume. That's where most of the magic will happen. So take it and make sure that the whole your level is covered in that. Covered in that, at least all the parts that you want your effect effects to be. Okay, let's say this is enough for now. And what I will do is to take this detail panel and put it here. So okay, put it here so we can really see what we are doing because I have camera there. You know, you are looking at it, so you probably do. Okay, right here post process so we can always quickly find it and let's start to having fun. Make sure that your camera is inside it so you see what's actually happening and what, come on, and what we will start is taking slowly through the settings you can use to make your game look just as beautiful as possible. First thing is bloom. What bloom will do is to actually make your light shine much more to the camera. Honestly, if for fantasy game or RPG fantasy like we are doing here, it's probably useless. You won't probably use it that much. Maybe just a little bit. Let's set it to 0.7, I would say. That's about, that's enough. But if you are making sci-fi game or a game where you have a lot of light, uh, blinking, uh, winking and all that stuff like lights does, you may find it really uh, useful. And let's go with exposure. Exposure uh, will basically set, uh, tell you or s let you set the difference between dark and light. So if you uh, there is some basic setup of your game and you want to have it uh, lighter or darker or brighter or dark darker, and you can see that if you cut it to plus, the game will look much br brighter, and if you go down, it will be much darker, like darkest darker, like this. That's super dark. Okay, and let's say that I actually want to have a darker red game, so I will set it to minus one. Okay, next one is chromatic aversion. You probably won't use it, but let's have fun with it. It's uh, what it does is basically create that 3D effect, like uh, red, blue, red, blue, and stuff which you can see with your 3D glasses if you have still some, and you are boomer in that case. But you know what that is. You can use it if you want to make your character look drunk or something like that or on drugs that's used quite a lot actually. You can also set start offset which uh, will start in center of screen and will disable that effect for center of screen and you can set how high it will be. For example right now if I set it to 0 0.5 about half of the screen will be normal but size as you can see is in that abortion. Aberration. I probably shouldn't say it's abortion. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, let's disable it because it looks terrible. Uh, dirt mask. You can use dirt mask if you want for creating some game mechanics or game effects. And for what it basically does is to project on your screen 2D texture. For example, let's use this basic white and set it really intensive. For example, 800. And you can see it's that screen is right in the middle. I don't really know what you can use it for right now, but I believe that there's a lot of different stuff. For example, when you are when you are destroyed and don't want to use ha when you are when your character is damaged and you don't want to use hat, you can use this. Okay, camera camera setting is probably useless for this because uh, you it won't affect very much if you are playing just with your character. You can use it quite a lot if you are making cinematics or anything like that. But in that case, you can change all that in camera settings, so it's probably not really useful right here. At least I don't know about any uses. And let's lens flare. That's something that looks really beautiful and it's really useless and really annoying. <laughs> Let me show you what it does. It creates this beautiful effect. Wonderful, right? And it's honestly every game I played it in was 
absolutely annoying. I hate it in games, but you may like it. So if you feel like it, you can put it in your game. You can edit color of it. Let's say that you want to have it much more reddish. And I will definitely disable it. Oh, let least make it much smaller. Okay. Do. Mm -hmm. Image effects uh, vignette is something you can use quite a lot. I would actually maybe recommend to have it in your game. Basically what vignette does is to make corners of your uh, screen darker, da darker than uh, your center. And that makes you makes your player help to focus on the center of it or what's happening in there. You can, I will, as I said, I would maybe recommend to have it there. Depends how you want your game to uh, look. And if you are actually dying, you may find it quite useful. For example, set it to 4 in case of dying and slowly make him die like that. That's up to you, I would say. And grain jitter and this stuff are, is probably useless if, unless you are making some horror game or really old school game. You can see what it does. Depth of field. That's something you may eventually use. Uh, what it basically does is exactly what it says. Uh, you set uh, distance, uh, how far you want it to have, and then it will blur everything from that. For example, let's set it to 30. So for that, your character and everything that's close should be quite in focus, and everything else should be out of focus, like this. And now we are getting to really juicy, wonderful stuff. Color grading. Color grading is your life, is your savior, your god, and everything. All that in between. Let's go. Let's get. Let, let's take it slowly. Uh, firstly, we'll set up temperature. Temperature means uh, what uh, temperature your colors will have. For example, if you go higher, it uh, will look much warmer. And if you go lower, it will look much colder. And I want to have it slightly warmer, so let's set it to 7000. Okay, maybe 7050. I would like that. It looks much more friendly. Usually, warmer colors associate to people friendly, cool environment, and colder or colder or bluer and uh, lights and uh, associate people uh, some uh, danger of freezing to death and stuff like that so be aware if, when you are using it or just usually use your gut feeling when you are color grading unless you have a really good experience i usually use my gut right mate <laughs> Okay, let's get to saturation. That's how saturated we want our colors to be. And as I said, we are making kind of happy fantasy, like, uh, I don't know, Alfheim or something like that. And so let's make it much more colorful. Like everything is great here. Set it to 1.3. Okay, that's too much, 1.2. And if you want, you can actually adjust colors. So you can see that it is actually saturating on like those colors which you choose which i am not going to do i will set everything to oh sorry what it was which means one 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 and just add this basic one here okay now let's get to contrast contrast is something you can play with quite a lot let's set it a little bit higher like that i would say oh maybe that's too much let's leave it in okay Come on, 1.1 1 .1 looked pretty good, and again you can just change color if you want. Even though I wouldn't probably recommend it with contrast. And then gamma, gamma of your colors. You can again choose if it will be darker or lighter. I usually don't like to mess up mess with gamma because you can actually achieve really similar reasons, uh, sim really similar results with uh, sat uh, saturation and contrast. Again, gain, that's a little bit similar to contrast. You can gain lightness of to your colors, which I will do because as I said, I'm making happy fantasy game where the Rick and everyone will be dead. Okay. And you can set all that into these different settings. I set it into global because I believe it's easier, easiest. And if you want, you can set specific settings for shadows. For example, let's say that you want your shadows to be really red. 
So you set it really strong and you can see that if you look at it, it okay, that's not probably a good example. You can set your shadows to look really evilish. Again, you can have a lot of settings you can play with and make your game just wonderfully beautiful or terrifying, depends what's your goal. Okay, there is also some film setting which you can play with to make give it a little bit more cinematic feeling. Which I will do just a little bit. Though basically let you enable much darker screens, much darker parts of it. So it looks much more contrasty, will probably achieve similar results with contrast. So I'm not really sure why it's film tour here. It's probably some film stuff I don't understand. Okay, and then you can set a black dip. That's how strong your black parts will be. And white the clip is same with white, I think. Okay, then you can use mobile toner, which is basically same thing as with color grading, but only for mobiles. So it's a little bit easier for a system. And then there is uh, there is a lot of uh, rendering features which you can get into and play with it like uh, really a lot. There is, for example, uh, retracing, global illumination, which you can actually use. For example, if you set up properly global illumination, uh, it will uh, eliminate all the dark parts of your game. So every even lowest parts of the game will have or 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 of your level will have. Uh, at least a little bit of light. You can set up here motion blur, which I don't know why you would in your game. It would look probably kind of weird, but you can. And what last thing I want to show you is uh, this priority setting, because that's what we need to look at. Right, this. Let's set this to 1. What priority means is how important your process volume is. Simply set in what order your post-process volumes will go. So we have set out, set this one on one. So I will create another post-process volume right here in this. So it may look actually kind of funny when you go inside this and it will in this and it will look totally different. And I have taken this mode, so let's add it here. And make sure that it covers all this weird object that we have created in previous tutorial. Okay, and make it look higher. Does it work? Yeah, pretty much. It covers much more than we wanted, but whatever. Let's not think about that. And what we will do here is to go to that post process do setting. You can name it, of course, which you should. I'm just not going to because I am lazy as hell. And and look at your priority. The first one was set to one. So this one, if you want to have it higher, you want to have it shown even if it is inside that first one, you need to set it to two. And that's what I have just done. And now I'm going to demonstrate it somehow. So make sure that you are inside it, which I am since I'm affecting it. Let's make it much colder and Make it kind of black and white. Okay, now you can save it. Uh, I can try to play it, but I'm afraid that, yes, I have a bit of a problem with uh, this landscape. Ignore it. I don't know what happened. Let's just pretend it doesn't. So I will can in, I can go through it, and as you can see, it changed as soon as I entered it. But try to ignore the landscape, please. <laughs> And even this works wonderfully. And if I go back to this, you can see that it disappeared. And it looks much warmer right now again. Okay, wonderful. Okay, I believe that's basically everything for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you. And honestly, it was probably the last of these RPG tutorials. If you want to see the rest of them, there is Bling probably somewhere, probably here. And I don't know, somewhere here, there's Hall. Um, whole playlist of them or you can click on the description there is definitely a link and that's about it you can join discord if you want or other social media which are in the description again and that's about it feel free to like subscribe and all this funny stuff see ya fancy out